Hi, my name is Michelle. Welcome to the No Code Space Lab. In the second half of this tutorial, we're going to tackle more complex tools that will allow us to finish your inventory app through Vault App. And more specifically, we're going to see how to create data and customize elements design. Let's get to it. As you can see, the balance for minus and plus doesn't work yet, which is normal because we haven't implemented the code to decrease or increase the quantity yet. So to do so, we're going to use another action from Airtable. The Airtable node is a parent of the minus node, so we have access to its actions. I'm going to simply use update a record, which is an action that changes the value of one row into the Airtable table. We need the ID of the row. That's why we added the ID column into Airtable earlier. I'm going to use current product.id to do so, and then I'm going to change the value of the actual record. So now, if I look at the value, there are default values, which is not exactly what we want, but what we'll do instead is edit an object. Which allows us to take an object and change one of its fields. So we're going to change the quantity value. And to do so, we're going to convert to formula its value and decrease the quantity by 1. We also don't want the quantity to be less than 0. So to prevent that, we're going to add a condition in which we're going to say that quantity has to be above zero, otherwise don't do anything. Once the record is updated, we're going to update the value of current product to the new value. Then like we did earlier for Airtable, we're going to make a condition to check whether the update is successful or not. If it is, we'll have the action run. Otherwise, we'll have the debug the error message run. So if we test it out, the minus decreases properly but it doesn't decrease the value that is here because we updated the current product value. But we also need to refresh the list with its new value. Now to do that, we're going to add something when we close the modal. We're going to redo the list request to update the list to the new value as well. After closing the modal, we're going to add a new list record call and we're going to do a condition check. If it's not successful, we'll debug the error. And if it is successful, we'll update the product list with the new records. And if I try again, you can see whenever I decrease the value, it updates when we close the modal. Now for the plus button, it's the same principle, so I'm going to copy and paste the graph. Now 
As you can see, it doesn't copy the click event, which makes sense because click is an event that is declared on a specific node. So we're going to use the click event of this node and not this one. We're also going to change the condition. For example, let's say that we don't want to have more than 100 products. If you don't want to have a limit, we can simply remove the condition. For now, 100 seems fine. And here we're going to replace the minus by plus. So if I test it, we see now that the increase is working. And now I want to show you a couple other things that you can do using the graph. Let's say that, for example, you want to display the total number of products. You can do that fairly easily. Just add a text which can be directly under the list. And can be current product count. Then we'll need a variable to count the product. I'll create it right away by going to the variable tab where I can see all of my other variables. And I'll just add it on app to make it easier to find. This new variable will be called product count and will be a number. I'll then use this variable to store the number of products. What I'll do is watch all changes on the product, and every time there's a change on this variable, I'll update the value of product count. There's a block for that, which is observe variable. So to add it, and it creates a block watch product. Now every time a product changes, I'm going to update the value of product count. There's another block that we'll use that allows us to have the length of a list, which is get size of list. So we'll add it here and link it to the product count. I'm then going to convert this to a formula and I'm going to use product count. And now if I hit play, I can see that the number of products is five. And if the number of product changes for whatever reason, it's going to be automatically updated. We're now going to move on to something a little bit more complicated. Instead of just having the number of products, I want to have the total price of all of the products, so the quantity of each product multiplied by its price and adding it all together. So we're going to do this in a graph. First, as we did for product count, we're going to create a new variable. This time, we don't need it to be created directly on text because we need to access it from the graph we're going to make the computation from. So I'm going to take my new variable and move it back to app. Now I'm going to rename it total price, which will be a number two. Then I can go back to the graph where I watch products and every time product changes, instead of just updating product count, I'm also going to update total price. Now first, I'm going to reset it to zero because I'm going to add all of the products. So every time product changes, I reset the variable to zero. I'll then add this block. And for each item of the list, I'm going to update the value of total price. By taking the quantity and the price, multiplying them together, and then adding them all to the final result. So to do that, I need to extract quantity and price. So there's a block for that called destructure an object that allows us to select every individual field of an object. And then I'm going to take price and multiply it to quantity.
Then I'm going to take this and I'm going to add it to the value of total price. and set the value of total price to final result. And that's it. I now have my total price value properly configured. And now we just need to display the total price. We could do it like we did for product count, but this time I want to show you how to do it a little bit differently to give you another option. I'm going to add a button, show total price. And then I'm going to add another modal. As you can see, the isOpen variable is already on app. So I'm just going to rename this one Total Price Open. and move to app. I'll now use a button and say in its graph that when you click on the button, you set is total price open to yes. And if I hit play now, it will open the modal. However, just like earlier, if I click outside of it, it doesn't close. And I can do that easily by going back onto my modal, which I'm actually going to rename product modal, just so that I don't get confused between them. And this one I'll call total modal. So we're going to do the same thing as earlier. We're going to close the modal when we request close. Then I'll just style it a bit by adding some more text. and linking this one to variable by using a formula. making it bold, and increasing the size. Changing the color, And now if I try it, you can see that I have the total price properly configured. And if, for example, I change this, you can see that it automatically updates. And one last thing that we can do is styling this button. You can change its color, you can replace the blue by yellow, you can change the text as well. You could add a border outside of the button, you could change its thickness, its color.
And as you can see, when I go over the button, its color becomes blue. And that might not be what we want. And so to change that, I'm going to take the background color. I'm going to go to the overstate here and remove the background. I'm going to use the same one, but a little bit lighter. And you can't see the difference enough yet for me, so I'm going to change it to have it even more contrasted. And so here you go. Let's go back to our preview mode, and we can try it all out to make sure it all works. And it's all working perfectly. So that's it for this tutorial. Don't forget to try all of these exercises and master all of these techniques at home on your own. Thanks for watching this no code training session.